One of the biggest mistakes jazz beginners make is to practice a lot, but not develop the skills that really will get them further. In fact, a lot of practice is just wasting time and building bad habits. In this video, I wanna go over seven skills that will help you become a better jazz guitarist. Now, some of these you might be working on already, but you can use this video to check so that you're sure nothing is missing. I actually think this one is easier to fix than most of the other skills in this video. And I'm sure that if I had recordings of myself from when I was starting out playing jazz, then I would definitely be guilty of playing long notes at the ending of phrases because I did not have this skill down yet. If you ask classical musicians who don't play guitar about their nickname for guitar, they will probably tell you staccato festival. Classical musicians are savages. What they mean is that the instrument has absolutely no sustain, which is sort of true if you compare it to a trumpet or a violin. But in this case, it's the other way around. Check this out. I'm sure you can hear how the long notes sound a bit strange and check out how short notes are much better at conveying the rhythm and connecting with the groove. And this is of course, quite important for jazz. Being able to control when you're using long or short notes is a problem that comes up very often with students in my course, The Roadmap, but they do learn to hear it and to fix it quite fast. The first step is usually to just start to end phrases on short notes and sometimes getting used to hearing melodies that end on an offbeat also helps. Now, of course, you wanna play long notes sometimes as well, the important thing is just that you are in control and that you choose it. It shouldn't just be a habit. Let's move on to an online comment that really annoys me. I probably need to watch out that this doesn't end up as a rant about what learning music is really about. You can't handle the truth. Jazz is a style of music and it has its own repertoire and a part of learning to play in that style is of course to learn to play those songs. So you want to get good at learning songs and you want to learn a lot of songs. One of my favorite quotes is from the guitarist Peter Bernstein, learn the song and let the song teach you. And for anything new that you want to learn, you haven't really learned it until it's something that you can use when you're playing songs, when you're making music. You also want to keep in mind that all the Barry Harris solo masterclasses were about writing lines on songs. They were not about exercises. They were about making music. So you need to work on being able to learn songs, both from sheet music and by ear. Just Learn a lot of songs so that music theory describes music that you already play, that you already hear. That way you have music with diminished suspensions or altered chords, and then theory isn't theory, it's music. And that brings me to that type of comment that I find really annoying, and also to the dramatic camera. Because every now and again, I will get asked how to sound more modern or more dark or something else on a 251. And it becomes clear from the one asking the question that he or she is only playing this four bar loop. And I think that's really a pity. If you play a song, if you're trying to learn songs, then you have a progression with a story, development, twists and surprises, and you don't just work with a static four bar loop. And maybe it's because you're playing that static four bar loop that your solo gets boring so quickly. But enough complaining for now. This could actually also be a hot take or at least a delicate topic, even though I'm not gonna go to the dramatic camera for this one. But I think you can argue that jazz has a certain language in the melodies that we improvise in terms of rhythm, flow, phrasing, and actually to some degree also just what melodies are used. And this is probably true for most style of music. We can all hear when something is a blues lick. And if you want to learn to play jazz, then you need to check out vocabulary so that you get that sound into your playing. Now this can be checking out licks, exercises, or what is probably the fastest way to improve, learning solos by ear, something I've talked about in numerous videos. A bonus if you play along with solos that you've learned by ear is that you also improve your phrasing, timing, and swing feel, which of course is also a part of the language. Now that I'm already on the topic of timing, swing feel, hearing the groove and the harmony, then this is of course all stuff that you want to develop. And one thing that will help you doing that is being able to practice with a metronome. Vastly underrated and actually a lot more fun than you might think once you get used to it. For jazz, this is about playing with the metronome on two and four and learn to play songs and soloing like that. And this will boost your ability to keep time feel time, hear the harmony, and play in the groove. The difference between practicing with a metronome and a backing track is that it's much more difficult to play with a metronome, but if it swings, 
then it's you. When you play with a backing track, then if it swings, it might just be the backing track. If you look at how famous jazz guitars practice, then it's pretty much always with a metronome. There are almost no exceptions there. And if you want to get started practicing with the metronome on two and four, then you can check out this video that I made a few years ago that covers that topic. I'll link to it in the description. What I said about soloing is just as important for chords. So instead of just playing tons of inversions or other exercises on two, five, one progressions, you also need to work on putting those chord voicings to work on songs. And trust me, that will help you develop so much in terms of voice leading, adding melodies and colors to your chords and all that other stuff that like me, you probably love about jazz and jazz chords. You can start the process rubato and explore the harmony and then later move it into time. Now, of course, rhythm is also important here, but I'll get to that in a bit. A problem that I've also encountered myself quite often when I'm trying to internalize new material, like for example, a new way of playing an arpeggio or a chromatic enclosure, is that I know how to play it, but it doesn't really work when I use it in a solo. And that's because an important step is missing between practicing something as a technical exercise and then turning it into great lines in a solo. And that missing step is composing. You can use lines or even entire solos. Again, also something that I help students with in the roadmap quite frequently. Composing is actually just improvising slowly and also with a way to go back and fix the lines so that they sound better and that you can figure out how the new thing should fit in there. This is a very effective way to introduce new material into your vocabulary. And keep in mind that this is also how Barry Harris works in his solo masterclasses. So if it works for him, it could probably make a useful part of your practice as well. The worst way to think about the course of a song is as a chord symbol with some extensions. This should almost be in the dramatic angle, eh? Simply because that's not music. What you want to work on is opening up those chord symbols so that you can improvise and connect the whole thing. You want to turn the chords into music. And for many jazz beginners, comping rhythms are a mystery and something that's very difficult to improve on. But that is maybe more about how we think about comping than the rhythms themselves. I am kind of curious about this. Can you let me know in the comments when was the last time that you practiced comping a song with the metronome on two and four? Because that is actually what you need to be doing. When you comp on a song, then you can start thinking in phrases, work with call response, riffs, and become much more free to get the song to sound good. And you're not getting stuck with which rhythm or which extension to play. To be able to play chords and phrases and put them to use on songs, then you don't want to be stuck with two complicated chords that are not flexible. And Joe Pass has a really solid approach for building a chord vocabulary like that, which I talk about in this video. 